Nuclear bombs are one of the most powerful and devastating weapons ever created. In seconds, they can wipe out entire cities and cause catastrophic destruction. But how do they work? The history of nuclear weapons dates back to the mid-1900s when scientists began to understand the process of nuclear fission. Fission occurs when a uranium or plutonium atom is split apart, releasing a tremendous amount of energy in the form of heat, light, and radiation. When these atoms are triggered in large numbers, it creates an atomic bomb. In 1939, scientists working in Berlin discovered that bombarding uranium with neutrons could produce a large amount of energy. This began what would soon become the world's most feared weapon. By 1945, the US had successfully tested its first atomic bomb as part of the Manhattan Project on a desert range in New Mexico, thus entering in to the nuclear age. So. What's the actual specifics of how these bombs work? Well, these first nuclear bombs were powered by nuclear fission reactions, which release a tremendous amount of energy very quickly from very small amounts of matter. They have a long and complex history, but at their core, they're made up of two basic scientific components, fission and fusion. In an atom bomb, otherwise known as the first generation of nuclear weapons, the ones that were tested during the Manhattan Project, fissile materials such as uranium or plutonium are placed at the center of the bomb device. Around this core, there's chemical explosives that compress and detonate the fissile material, or the uranium and plutonium. This causes a chain reaction where neutrons split more atoms, leading to an incredible release of this atomic energy that produces temperatures hotter than the surface of the sun. This works by getting radioactive material up to something known as critical mass, or the minimum amount of material needed to sustain fission reactions. Little Boy, the first nuclear weapon that was ever used in wartime, worked by shooting a hollow uranium-235 cylinder at a target plug of the same material. Critical mass in this case was reached by firing the materials together, and this critical mass depends on the density of the material. As the density increases, the critical mass decreases. Fusion bombs, also known as hydrogen bombs or second generation nuclear bombs, are an even more powerful type of nuclear weapon. The process occurs when two isotopes of hydrogen, tritium and deuterium, are fused together in a confined space. This fusion releases far more energy than just fission alone. In fact, it can be thousands of times greater. For these modern thermonuclear weapons, rather than bringing two subcritical pieces of nuclear fuel together, modern weaponry instead detonates chemical explosives around a pit containing uranium-235 or plutonium metal. This inward force compresses its core and brings its atoms closer together until it reaches critical mass. Once this occurs, neutrons are injected to initiate a fission chain reaction, resulting in an atomic explosion with powerful devastation potential. Fusion is a much better bomb type than fission due to its efficiency in utilizing scarce materials like uranium-235 or plutonium-239. Thermonuclear weapons are generally articulated as primary, utilizing chemical and fission blast, and secondary, incorporating a consequential fusion detonation. Yet, the actual occurrences behind these explosions are far more intricate. For instance, a pure fission primary is inefficient, as the plutonium pit would explode before most of the plutonium-239 could react. To maximize the bomb's efficiency, a boosted reaction with hydrogen gas, composed of what we mentioned earlier, deuterium and tritium, at its core should be put in place to make this happen. As the surrounding plutonium responds to the sustained fission reaction, fusion occurs in tandem 
within the hydrogen gas, which then frees neutrons that further induce additional fissioning in the atoms. The secondary fuel doesn't solely contain fusion energy. It also has a fission spark plug made out of plutonium-239 or uranium-235. The initial explosion compresses the gas from the outside, which causes supercriticality in the spark plug material, thus heating and igniting more hydrogen fusion reactions. Fusion unleashes neutrons that then crash into a nearby layer of uranium, resulting in the fissioning of atoms and producing more than half of a weapon's explosive power. Thermonuclear weapons, as we previously referred to them, omit a uranium blanket, making them famously known as neutron bombs because of their fusion-driven emission of neutrons. These kind of bombs produce far more radiation than a regular atomic weapon with equal yield. During the Cold War period, these arms were contemplated for use against tank assaults with the aim to disable tank officers without actually having to blow anything up. So how many nuclear weapons are out there and which countries have them? Estimates from the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute suggest that there are roughly 13,400 nuclear weapons in existence across nine countries. There are five declared nuclear weapon states recognized by the Nuclear Proliferation Treaty, which are China, France, Russia, the United Kingdom, and the United States, which have a combined about 10,000 warheads between them. India, North Korea, Pakistan, and Israel are the other countries that are currently known to have nuclear weapons in their arsenal. So that's how nuclear weapons work, how many exist in the world, and what they could do if they all exploded.